It's about time I upgrade the driving sim in my home. <sighs> I forgot what I was gonna say. The all new IQ Link ecosystem for Corsair finally removes all the cable clutter from your PC. IQ Link components synchronize RGB lighting and settings between connected devices with a single wire, creating a chain of devices on a single port via the Link Hub. Take control of your system and ditch the clutter by following the sponsored link in the description below. So a few months back, we did our video where we put together the TRX uh, racing simulator from Track Racer, and then we had the Moza steering wheel and pedals and stuff on there. And then we learned that I'm a terrible driver in, in sim racing, but that's okay. Uh, I said then that I wanted to upgrade the rig at home. Now I'm using the same TRX frame at home, so I'm not gonna talk about that today. You can go watch that video. Uh, actually, there's two of them, I think. No, it's one video with two parts because we needed a part that was missing or wrong or whatever. Um, shipping one of the boxes was delayed. I digress. I'm using the same frame at home to replace my very aging Obuto Revolution. The Obuto Revolution has been a good frame. The problem is it doesn't really have the provisions for any of the more modern steering wheel bases, uh, servo bases, and pedal mounts and stuff. So anyway, in talking with the guys uh, over at Track Racer, they, uh, they suggested that I give SimCube a shot. Now what I'm using at home right now is actually some really old, like first gen Fanatec Club Sport stuff, which is not bad by any means at all. It's just, I wanted to sort of up my game, you know, because better stuff apparently will make you a better driver. So the SimCube stuff is something they recommend. So I figured I would just kind of do an unboxing. I have no idea what the build quality is like. All I know is that SimCube has a pretty wide range of product and it can get pretty pricey. So this is not sponsored. I paid for this. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and take a look. So we got three packages here. We've got the SimCube Tanko GT21. We've got the SimCube 2 Pro and then we've got the VRM, VNM simulation VNM pedal. So I believe SimCube is what I use for the steering wheel. So this is the base, I'm pretty sure. This is the wheel. The base is actually pretty heavy. This is a different pedal that they had suggested to me uh, when it comes to realism. Let's start with the pedals. I feel like the wheel is important, but when I'm on simulators, I find that the pedals are the most important in terms of when it comes to feel. So I don't know what to expect in here, honestly. It's been so long since I ordered this, I forgot. Okay, so they're individual pedals that have to be mounted individually to the plate. So that's kind of neat. Yeah, this is definitely gonna be the throttle pedal. It's much more linear. Look at the barrel connectors they use on these things. They are not effing around. <laughs> like this is some pretty serious uh, pedalage, if you, or cableage, if you will. So this is the throttle pedal. You can see we've got all kinds of adjustability here in terms of the um, height at which we can mount it. So if we were to take this and adjust this, this will control the angle at which the pedal is on the, on the rig. So for instance, if you've got a pedal mount, like on the TRX, the pedal mount tends to have a little bit of like an incline to it. So if I were to mount this on an incline, obviously it would be pointing downward. So I can mount these in a lower position to bring the pedal back how I want it. The pedal, as you can see, has this adjustable slide on here. So I can loosen these up and raise or lower the gas pedal. Anyway, this right here is our tension adjuster, obviously. This is a mechanical type of adjuster. So as we turn this screw, we move it along this jack screw right here, which will increase or reduce the tension on the uh, throttle pedal. So there's that. This is absolutely gonna be the brake. And I can tell that because it has the elastomers in here. Um, this is how you can, so, the high-end sim racing stuff back when I like built my Obuto, um, and still to this day, are running a true like master cylinder and hydraulics through it. That's the only way you're gonna get the realistic feel of a, of a racing pedal. Now racing pedals and, and brake pedals in race cars are almost always manual brakes. They are not powered brakes. And that's so that the driver gets full modulation and control and feel over the braking of the car. And what you'll find is most of the time the pedal throw in a race car's brake pedal from 0% braking pressure to 100% might only be like not much farther than that. So you're literally dealing with, so, so what this is designed to represent, the spring right here, that's the spring load the initial um, preload on the pedal pressure, and it would be a spring in an actual race car. What these 
elastomers right here are designed to represent is the resistance of manually using your leg pressure to push fluid through the system into the calipers to squeeze the caliper pistons on the rotor. So that's what these are designed to mimic. Now, do we get adjustable ones in here? We get a lot of hardware. We do get a replacement spring. Here's the control box for it all. There's no manual in here. Nope, no manual. Anyway, I'm fairly certain this spring is designed to replace the first elastomer if I want. So what that means is I could have a more standard like streetcar feel on pushing the pedal down and having that spring. And then it gets harder down at the bottom. And since there's only two instead of three, um, there'll be a little more give in the elastomer. So this is gonna be for replacing uh, this guy right here. It might only replace this spring and not double spring on there. I'm not entirely sure. I would have to look up the manual online, um, but you can adjust the brake feel. Right now, it looks like it's currently set at 200 kilograms, 441 pounds, which is not even as heavy as I used to be. Anyway, moving on. Uh, yeah, that's a lot of brake pressure. So obviously that, that is... So that's our brake pedal, which goes on the left. Our clutch pedal goes in the middle. And this is for all of you unlearned, uncultured swine who can't drive a manual transmission. And then, oh wait, that's our <laughs> gas pedal. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> wait, you still have it wrong. <laughs> Shut up. I'm doing it backwards. I'm behind the pedals here, okay? Let's talk about the uh, clutch right here. So the clutch here, as you can see, is on this cantilever arm. And that's designed to give you the engagement feel of when, so in a manual car, when you hit the pressure plate, at that point, you'll feel the pressure kind of like move beyond because there's a little bit of a pressure release in the system because it's man full clamped on the clutch already. So this is designed to give you that feel of like, okay, boom, clutch engaged, and there's some of that preload on the clutch or slip. Depending on the simulator, uh, some might allow you to slip the clutch nicely. And that's obviously gonna be dependent on how you have it calibrated in the throw. So you could calibrate it so that there's all this preload for clutch slip. And then, make sure my thumbs aren't gonna get crushed in there. As soon as you hit that cantilever motion where it pops up, that's where the clutch is fully engaged. So 100% clutch could actually be more like right there. And then everything beyond that is just extra throw for no reason. And then obviously you can change the pressure, the tension on this. This one has a locking nut because this is gonna be moving under that pressure uh, and that weird motion a lot. So you can loosen up this nut, reduce the spring tension on the clutch, and then you can use these different mounting holes right here to change the leverage position or how soon or how late that engagement happens. Now here's the control box right here. Everything plugs into this. So we've got a handbrake, which I don't have, but you can put the handbrake in here so that you can have this control box for the handbrake. Uh, here's our throttle, our brake, our clutch, and then our USB. And then this right here is run and DFU. So DFU is for device firmware update, which uh, I guess just puts it into a certain mode. This is a very mechanical box. And then they give you the USB cable to connect it to your computer. Now here's all the extra hardware and stuff that you need for mounting this down. Obviously, as you can see, these have a little bit of adjustability in the feet for mounting them along a rail. And that is the pedals. I'm actually really excited about these. The pedals, my Club Sport pedals at home have started kind of like coming apart. Like some of the screws have fallen off and I have replaced them with not the right size screws. And so they're clicky and floppy and I really hate it. And I'm really looking forward to getting this set up. Let's move the pedals out of the way and let's get to the good stuff too, which is our base and wheel. And this I believe is a direct drive. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with the wheel. Not the base, but the wheel. The wheel's kind of neat because you can, you know, you can put together the wheel and base package that you want. So you find the kind of wheel that fits the style racing you're gonna do, whether it be drifting, which would be a full circle wheel, obviously. Um, GT racing, which might be a flat bottom wheel or flat top, flat bottom. And then obviously you've got like F1 open wheel, which is more like a yoke. And then um, NASCAR, which is a big old wheel with holes in there so you can mount your gator, plushy or something. <laughs> Whatever it is, NASCAR mounts on their wheels. <laughs> All right, here we go. So SimCube, this is the Tanko or Taco 
GT21, so it's gonna be a GT wheel, obviously. And there she is, just like I said, a GT wheel with the flat bottom. And it's gonna be the same kind of, they're like the same shift, shifters I put into my, my R8. This is, this feels like a real GT wheel, like out of a race car. It's all Alcantara, which means I'm gonna have They're to use. Super grippy. Ooh. But it means I'm gonna have to use gloves because otherwise it's gonna get all oily and gross. Oh yeah. But. They're nice, but they're not as nice as ours in there. They're less clicky. I mean, they're clicky, but those go. Okay, so we've got our buttons that are in range of our thumbs. Obviously, we've got different knobs that we can control to, or add to things. So like in GT car, this could be like a boost controller right here, maybe a brake bias controller. This also is a D-pad, which helps for certain titles to navigate the, you know, getting in and out of the menu system. So these are all assignable. What I like is there's no labels on these, pre-labeling these like wipers or flashers or whatever. It's just, you can set it up to however you want. Cause I may not want the flashers on my left thumb. I might want them on my right thumb, you know? So some of the other wheels pre-label them based on like where they are in the real car, but I like that these are just like this so you can do it yourself. Why do we have a three volt battery? <laughs> okay, so here's where that battery goes right here. And then here's the cover for the battery. I'm just not entirely sure what's battery power operated on this. So here's the Moza wheel and you can see how everything's labeled, what it's supposed to be already. There's like our ABS controller, you know, boost controllers and stuff. Um, differential bias, brake bias, it's all in here. DRS buttons, but it even has a screen. But if you look inside, the connections are inside. I don't like this being battery operated. That's, in my opinion, that's kind of terrible. And the reason why I say that, I'm the kind of person that forgets to turn things off all the time. And so, you know, what is that? That's our power button on and off right there. We have another button on the back. And that's an actual physical like toggle button. So you will forget. I will forget. <sighs> Yeah, you know how Cletus has all the turn on water, yeah. idiot? Yeah. I'm gonna have turn off wheel stupid. Yeah. What the, I don't, this is, I don't like that. That, for a premium product, this is bad. Now I know I'm griping about the battery. I, I still prefer a physical connection wherever possible. However, Nick did find online that they've, uh, SimCube has put a lot of design effort into having this transmission system be extremely low power to where you can expect five years of battery life out of it. That doesn't mean you can probably leave it turned on for five years and it won't die. I think they're basing that off of like average use per day. Now I don't know what that is. I don't know if that's one hour a day, two hours a day, or is it 500 or five continuous years? I highly doubt that. But I wouldn't have to worry about any of that if it was just directly wired. Even if it had a freaking spiral cord plugged in like a real race car because you're not going to go around so many times on the wheel that you can't have it just wrap around because that's how they do in real race cars it it's a spiral cord that's wrapped around the column and it just stretches so i would have rather had a physical connection to the wheel that looks more real than this here's all the stickers by the way if you want to label the buttons yourself it comes with a whole bunch of stickers that you can use <laughs> sorry <laughs> thanks a for quick chats that's funny well, let's move on to the base. Let's see what the base has in store. All right, so this is the SimCube 2 Pro base. So our stickers, power plug. I can't believe they're still using these old USB 2. Oh, B? Yeah, I just, why is it still USB 2? Whatever. Hey, look, this one gives you a manual. That's cool. Dude, that brick. <laughs> B. Oh, jeez. God, <laughs> I felt that through my feet. <laughs> Read instructions before use. Vargabraus Garvarstrsting lesson. It means read the manual before use. <laughs> oh yeah. So <laughs> this one comes with the emergency stop <laughs> because of the torque that this is able to generate. This is not for kids. Do not let your kid get on here and be like, I'm gonna drive around the car. Cause it's very realistic. And if the simulator simulates wheel movement by hitting a wall and the wheel turns, that's gonna turn real fast, just like a real car. And unlike real cars, where if something happens to the steering really badly, where the drive shaft breaks away, or the electric steering just doesn't translate it to the wheel, this does. And if your kid's got a hand up through there, bad things are gonna happen, okay? I almost dropped the wheel, but that's besides the point. So they give you this emergency stop. So if someone gets tangled up in there, you can turn off the torque. That's exactly what this is. It's literally a big ass, oops. We have a wireless antenna. 
Why do we have a wireless end? Is it for talking to this? Probably, huh? I'm becoming very confused with my purchase here. Okay, anyway, the, so it's not as bad as we thought because it has this quick release pin. Okay, <laughs> that might need to be worked in a little bit. <laughs> okay, at least it doesn't have any like wiggle. To be honest, I, I know I'm griping. I have had a quick release removable wheel that I could change with different types since 2015. I've never changed it. I've never taken it off, except for when I'm moving the system around. But so. it also doesn't have a battery that needs replacing. That's the thing that I'm just like, come on, man. I'm gonna forget it. Do you know how I know I'm gonna forget this? Because I also like looking at stars and other flying discs in the sky and the holes punctured in the roof, you know, with my kid. And my viewfinder, right, my, my target finder is battery powered. And guess what I forget to turn off every time we're done looking at stars? It does feel nice, it really does. I just had to, I had to get a specific base plate for this particular one uh, for the TRX that I've got. The nice thing about, about Track Racer is the fact that um, they do have all the base plates and things for all the different wheels that are on the market, whether it be a bottom mount or a front mount like this. I guess time will tell. I mean, it's inconvenient to change out a wheel and stuff. Um, it's also really inconvenient to spend, you know, like twenty-five to three thousand dollars for this stuff, and then realize, like, oh, it's battery powered. I just wish it, it would have been nice if they had a way of not doing a momentary or like a toggle switch like this. This is a toggle on off, and then have it so if no inputs are sensed in like an hour, it self turns itself off. Or if the base turns off. That's true, because if the base is no longer communicating with it, it should recognize the base is off, therefore turn off. What if I just put this on the rig here and take the Moza home? <laughs> uh, I gotta use it before I decide. All right, so it does have a 24 month warranty on the, on the wheel. Uh, I can't see anything about the base. If the wheel has a 24 month guarantee, a warranty, I would hope that the base does too. Well, that's nice thing. If you buy it through, uh, if you buy it through a company like Track Racer or whatever, then they support and help you with any of the products that they buy, you buy from them. They can get you in touch with the manufacturer if you have any issues, so that's kind of nice. But past that, um, yeah, I guess what I need, I, I have to take my rig apart at home before I can put the new one in there, and that's just been a daunting task that I've not wanted to do. And then putting together the new one was is also a dauntinger task, because there's more pieces to it. But we've done it once already, so I know what to expect. All right, guys, it's just been an unboxing. You guys have asked for some more sim racing stuff and maybe we'll finally be able to do something. We haven't driven on ours in a long time. But should probably use the one we have here before I worry about putting together another one. Okay, so I guess at that point, I did ask you guys, you guys want me to give you a review of how all of this sim cube stuff goes or is it worth spending half that for Moza? You got, that's where you guys gotta tell me if you wanna see it or not. Let's be honest, even if you were like, no, we don't care, I'm probably gonna do it. All right, guys, we'll see you in the next one. Whee!